Welcome back to MPT. Today's video is focusing on three critical applications and three essential parameters for solid state power amplifiers, also called SSPAs. You get a three and three in this video. I will also discuss some of the not so obvious subtleties in the essential parameters. Be sure to watch to the end and then download the white paper I have linked below with some information for designers and users of SSPAs. Get your product to market faster with a custom phased array solution from MPT Corp. Here at MPT, we help wireless and aerospace companies with phased arrays using antennas and electronics. Therefore, you may rightly ask, how is this video on SSPAs related to phased arrays? As you'll see, SSPAs are important for phased arrays, communication systems, and radar. First, let's look at a typical block diagram of some antenna arrays that use an SSPA. For a passive phased array, the SSPA is used to drive all the antenna elements in the array. Some phased array radar systems use this architecture. As can be seen in the block diagram, a power divider combiner circuit, phase shifters, and antenna elements follow the SSPA. This means that the SSPA must generate enough power to overcome the losses in the circuits leading up to the antenna from the SSPA and radiate the required power. The peak power for some of the SSPAs used in passive phased arrays can be 10 to 30 kilowatts or much more. Second, another antenna that uses an SSPA is a Butler matrix array. It's a switched beam antenna system that uses couplers and power dividers. The block diagram shows a two element and a four element Butler matrix. For the four element Butler matrix, a switch selects the antenna element that will be connected to the SSPA. The SSPA provides the output power required by the phased array. Third, let's consider how a SSPA can be used in a communication system. Although there are many possible examples that we could look at, we're going to look at one that, an example that's highly specialized and is called a tropospheric communication system. And it's been used for many decades. Traditionally, these systems use traveling wave tube amplifiers, also called TWTAs. However, TWTAs can be lower reliability compared to solid state power amplifier options. As a result, many tropospheric systems have switched to using SSPAs due to the efficiency and reliability they offer. Now let's discuss three of the most important performance parameters for SSPAs. The first and obviously most important is output power. This is the amount of energy that the power amplifier delivers to the circuit and to the antenna that it's connected to. What might not be obvious to most people is that for communication systems, the output power must be specified in the linear operation range. If it's not, then the communication system can have errors and high bit error rates. The second important parameter is efficiency. At a fundamental level, the power amplifier converts DC power to RF output power. And the, the efficiency of that conversion is called the efficiency of the HPA. However, an important aspect of efficiency that's often overlooked by designers and users of, of SSPAs is the effect of efficiency upon thermal performance. Low efficiency SSPAs dissipate more thermal energy which may be important for the S for, which is important for the SSPA to remain reliable. The third is frequency bandwidth. Obviously, the SSPA must cover the frequency range of the system that it's connected to. However, what's not obvious to some is the relationship between bandwidth and output power. As the bandwidth increases, it becomes more and more difficult to deliver high power and efficiency over that required bandwidth. The reason is that the SSPA requires a specific amount of impedance at its output 
port in order to deliver a, a required amount of power and efficiency. And matching that over wide bandwidth is difficult. Therefore, users and designers of SSPAs must carefully consider how bandwidth affects their power and efficiency. We've discussed three important ap applications for SSPAs and three crucial parameters for SSPAs. I think you'll agree that SSPAs are an important component for modern communication systems and care must be taken in their specification. Now, download my white paper I've linked below. It provides more details about SSPAs that are useful for designers and users. If you're starting a phase array development, then consider the experts here at MPT. Until next time, this is Rick Sturdivant with MPT.